Welcome. You have joined Pray to Stay in the Race as we share scriptures, testimonies, and prayer with encouragement to be bold, be strong, for our Lord God is with you. Hi, I'm LaTanya. I'm so glad that you are part of our Pray to Stay in the Race. And you know, Pray to Stay in the Race, it includes so many topics, so many variety uh, of people and and um, ministries. And the key thing about Jesus, this is what I love about Jesus, it's that uh, it's for whosoever so whosoever hears, whosoever believes, whosoever want more of Jesus, of the Holy Spirit, of our Abba Father, you can obtain it. And we're, we're believing, at least I'm believing, that as each episode you watch, you're going to take something away. You're going to take something away to add into your life to let you know that he who began that good work in you, it tells us in Philippians 1 um, verse 6, that we are confident in he who began that good work in you, he's going to complete that work. And so as I look back on my life and on this year of 2023, as we're Getting, this will be the last episode that you're finna see um, today, and that's episode number nine. As I look back over all these months and years, and I think about all the things that I messed up in, all the things that, yeah, God, I'm going to do that, and then I forgot I didn't do it. And you know what? His loving kindness, his mercy that endures forever and ever, every morning, guess what? He wakes me up. And if I'm willing to hear, I'm going to hear his voice and the Holy Spirit will guide me throughout that day. So there's been some things I've done in the past that, you know, I, I don't even know how I can be called a child of God, a judge, a title officer, all the titles that the world puts on me. And, um, well, you see, I allow it because I might want that paycheck. I might want that relationship. I might want something. So I allow that title to come upon me as I'm walking and everything. I have to, I, I, I believe I said it a couple episodes back that I have to remember that everything I do, I'm doing it wholeheartedly unto my Lord Jesus, Savior, my God. Because without him, whoever you think I am, I wouldn't be it if it wasn't for him. So I want to read this one scripture. It says over in Colossians 1 13, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. People, it's all about his love. It's all about Jesus. And as I get ready to enter into the year 2024, I want you to not see Tanya. I want to be able to compel to you to see my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've had some good people on. We've, we've had, um, we've had mother Proctor. A lot of you knew her from Kmart from, um, she now this is a businesswoman. She tried to get me to become a real businesswoman, but I was giving all the products away. She said, "You can't give, you can't give the products. You got to sell the products, Tanya." But I would see that oh, they need that, and I would give it away like home home interior decorator. I think she just decorated half of half of um, Otero County. But Mother Proctor, she was. We were talking about the Holy Spirit. That was the episode you really need to go and watch. Um, then there was James and Courtney and John. Um, James and Courtney are are part of the With Hands um, here in Otero County, With Hands, about public lands. They want to go through and they want to take all these broken down buildings, homes and that, and move them and put some ga some garden um, plants and you know, we're headed there. You're going to have to eventually be planting your own gardens one day, maybe because there's not going to be anything in the stores, but they want to teach and train people how, you know what, you can, you can um, do a garden and you can have your vegetables and everything right there at, at a touch of just reaching out and picking. But we went on a hike with them and I saw my eyes were open to a lot of different 
plants that you can eat and that, you know, I, I look at it, oh, I thought that was a weed. <laughs> but I'm learning different things as I travel with Courtney and um, James. So that's a very interesting program. And then we had B. I have B here. And B is one of my, was one of my, is one of my um, church members, uh, mother, who she's been coming, coming. And then this time I said, you know what? We looked at each other when we first met and I thought, you know how you look at somebody and you think something's going to go on with me and that person, but you don't know what it is. So after, I guess, three or four years now, we know what it was. It was for that episode. And I know you're going to be blessed. She blessed me just praying over me. Hallelujah. But and I've got more people lined up coming up for this new year. So I pray that God will quicken to you to, to click on, click yes, you liked it, subscribe. And what else? I think Jonathan told me also one more thing. Have you to put a comment in the comment remark places. You know, we want more and more people. It's not about me, I told you. It's not about all the people I'm bringing on either. They're just showing you that if God can forgive them, he can forgive you. And so do all those things. Check like, I like, check, subscribe, or do su su subscribe. <laughs> Hallelujah. It gets me all tangled up. Hallelujah. Okay, so I'm 68 going on. Let's see, I'll be going on 69, but age is just a matter of the mind. And, you know, as long as I have breath to praise my Lord or to say something about Him, I will praise ye the Lord. So do those three things and add in the comment and share, share so other people can see. So I know today's episode is really going to be powerful because I've known this young kid since he, he went to school with my nephews um, uh, while they were here a couple of years. And so he was in and out of our house and all that. And But I've watched him grow. I've, I've watched his children grow. And I know he's going to be speaking from his heart. So I ask you to get a pen and pencil because you're going to write down some of these scriptures, I'm telling you. And you're going to be blessed that greater is he within me than he that is in the world. And it's all because of what Jesus did for you. 2023 was the year of agreement. And now 2024, we're finna branch off into new beginnings. I don't know about you. I'm going into new beginnings. I'm going to forget about this year and I'm finna press forward into my new year. So above all, I want you to stay in the race, but I want you to know God loves you. Amen. Get ready for our speaker. Alika. Well, welcome to Pray to Stay in the Race. And we are almost, we only have a few more days left before this year, 2023 is up. And um, I just, before I go into prayer, I just want to read a little bit of um, Psalms 139. And it says in the Passionate Translation, it says, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul, and you understand every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. Um, you read my heart like an open book and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey um, even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. You have laid your hand on me. This is just is too wonderful, deep and incomprehensible. Um, you understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. Isn't that good to know somebody knows you? Where could I go from you, spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm, realm of the dead, you're there. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you're there. 
Oh God. And then skip it on down to verse 11. It's impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me. <laughs> oh God, this just brings so many memories. People, there is so no such thing as darkness with you. The night to you is as bright as the day. There's no difference between the two. And I, I want to stop right there. I just want, I just want you to know that he is the light that the light now lives in us. And sometimes we can't see because we are the light of the world. Um, allowing him to flow through us. So join with me in prayer as we pray that by the time you see the end of this clip, your new beginnings have started now and not wait to 2024. Father God, I thank you for everyone that will be watching who you have to, to click in. I thank you that Lord in their homes, in their cars, wherever they're at, that Holy Spirit, you take over, you allow them to know personally that you hear them, you know them, and that you have a perfect plan for them. Now, Lord, increase their relationship with you. And Lord, we will forever, forever give you all the glory and honor that belongs to you. And we say, Lord, we will praise you until we have our last breath on this earth. So we give you the glory and honor and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you in Jesus name. So with me, people, hallelujah, I'm excited. I welcome Alika. Hey, Alika. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's been ages since we've seen each other, yeah. you know? Yeah, I I remember it got just quick. And um, I remember when you was, um, you used to come down to the TV station too. Mm -hmm. Used to be TV 63 and um, now KVBA. Mm -hmm. um, what, what used to bring you down there or help? with Bill Exner and everyone? Well, you know, I've always loved sports. And of course, uh, KVBA was, you know, huge on our community sports. And so uh, myself and a few others from the church, you know, we would just uh, go to the, the sporting events and we would help broadcast for KVBA. And uh, so that's that's what I was doing at the station. Hallelujah. And so you also was a referee that we would get to catch you referee in some of the various games and yeah. that. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because as a player, I used to hate referees <laughs> and I, I never imagined that I would put on the stripes. But it's just been an amazing journey because I I used officiating as a tool to get into the schools as a youth pastor. Okay. Um, and, you know, that was just kind of my way of being able to minister to the student athletes outside the walls of the church. Mm -hmm. um, but it just became uh, my ministry, you know, over the last few years. And so it's just it's been it's been a crazy journey now. Um, so how long have you been here in Alamogordo or uh, so my parents got stationed here with the Air Force in 85. I was two years old at the time. And so 38 years. So uh, we also we got here through the Air Force, my dad in 71 is when we got stationed here also. We were all grafted into this place, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> so so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna let you look in the camera, say again who you are and whatever you want God to pour out of you. Awesome, thank you, thank you. You know, it's really just amazing how gracious and, and faithful God has been in my own life. And, you know, it can be extremely difficult to love ourselves um, especially if you have a storied past, you know, there's just sometimes there's things that we're not proud of. Um, sometimes there's things that happen to us that aren't even our fault. Um, and, and we begin to uh, just live a life of, of shame and regret. And we tend to cover those insecurities and, and those faults by wearing a mask. And, you know, we become this person that we want to be, not who we are. And, and so I, I just think it's crazy that you brought up Psalm 139, you know, because for the last few months, that's really a passage that I've been meditating on, you know, because God knows who we are. You know, he knew us before we were created and uh, we were created in a secret place, you know, yeah. and, that's, and that's really helped me to understand who I am. And, and when we understand who we are, we could tap into the grace of God and we, we not only know who we are, but whose we are. It, it helps us to to get back to that first love, which is our love with Jesus, yes, you know? And yes. so just the transformation that has taken place in my life and, and just reading that scripture, it's helped me to look outside of myself, you know, because again, when, when things 
when things in our lives take place that, you know, um, maybe we've been hurt by people that are close to us. Um, maybe some of you have been hurt by your church. You know, mm -hmm. you, you felt that church hurt or the, the church leadership didn't really um, take care of you as, as you would have expect them to um, as the body of Christ. And, and so you start to live in this, this world of, of not feeling worthy or, or not being good enough or, or, you know, just feeling inadequate. That passage really helped me to understand that we're all human. You know, there's only one perfect person and that's Jesus, which is why we serve him. Serve him. And so, you know, just understanding what that scripture means to me is that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, mm -hmm. I was created in the secret place. And, and it says in there, you know, where can I go from your presence? You know, you, you, I can go to heaven and you're there. I can go to the depths of, of hell and, and, and you're there, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think for me, um, when I was going through a lot of that pain in my life, I, I, you know, I spent 15 years in the ministry, um, serving as a youth pastor, a young adults pastor, an associate pastor. Um, I, I had a nonprofit teen outreach where we would reach out to troubled teens and help them overcome struggles by making Christ known. But in all those years, I never really understood what it was to be the church. I had never seen yeah. the church be the church in my life up until recently. And so, you know, just understanding God is gracious in his love, you know, and, and no matter how lost we seem, or, or, or feel God has just has a way of, of continuing to pursue us. It's not necessarily that we pursue him. He pursues us. Right. right? And so I try to run from God. Yes. I don't want to have anything to do with the church, but because of who he is, I couldn't escape him. And so if you're out there, if you're watching this, maybe you're feeling inadequate. Maybe you're feeling unworthy. Maybe you're feeling guilty for some of the things that you've done in your past that you're not proud of. I want you to understand that God loves you right where you are. The Bible says, come as you are, mm -hmm. but because he loves you so much that he would die for your sins, yes. he doesn't want to leave you right where you are. You know, the Bible is not for our information, it's for our transformation. Yes. And I'll tell you what, these last seven months, uh, the, the struggle and, and the adversity that I faced, um, I had never been as close to God as I am now. And, and it's because of that transformation that he's shown me and taught me so many different things. You know, when we go through struggles in our lives or when we feel like we're a victim, it's so easy to, you know, to play the the guilt card or the right. um, the victim and, and ask God, well, why are you allowing this to happen to me? You know, if there's that there's that popular question out there, you know, well, if God is so good, then why does he allow bad things to happen? Mm -hmm. But I would really challenge you to turn that question around and ask, well, if you know, why, why does God allow good things to happen to bad people? Because we're all terrible people in our flesh. The Thank only you. thing that we have good in us is Jesus, you know? And so just understanding who he is, the sovereign God, gracious in his love, you know, he, he has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. And, and the devil's mission is to steal, kill, and destroy that work of God in your life. Mm -hmm. And, and so I think really the thing that I want to share with your viewers, you know, is just that, um, you know, these last six months I had spent in prison, um, I don't really want to get into the details too much, but right, right. you know, it was, it was just, I was at a dark place in my life where I was really lost. I was really confused about my walk with God. If, if God was real. Um, and I asked that same question, you know, why, why are you allowing this to happen to me? And, and then it, it, it kind of just dawned on me, you know, like when we ask that question, it, we're making it about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I had to turn around and, and, and instead of asking God, why, why are you allowing this to happen? I had to ask God, what are you trying to teach me? You know? And so, um, I have five children. My oldest son is 23 years old. He's uh, stationed in at creature for space. And, uh, you know, he's, um, he's the pride of my life, you yeah. know? And, and, uh, I also have three young boys that live with me at home that are, uh, my nine year old is about to be 10 next week. And then I have an eight and a seven year old. And then my daughter just turned 21 this past, uh, September as well. And so, you know, I, I want to, I want to leave a legacy for them, especially that, that points to Jesus, you know, and these last seven months being ripped away from my boys, I realized, mm -hmm. um, that in the years prior to me going to the, to prison, um, I was idolizing them. You know, I was putting them before, before God, God. Mm -hmm. and you know, like because of the church hurt, because of the, the pain that I was going through from a failed marriage, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I tried running away from the church. I didn't want to have anything to do with God. And, 
And so we wouldn't go to church on a regular basis. Um, I would still pray with my boys. We would still read, read scripture, but I was, I was tired of organized religion. Um, and that's just, that's just how I felt at that mm -hmm. time. And, and so, yeah, when I was in prison, God showed me that I was idolizing them. I was putting them before him. Mm -hmm. And even though I couldn't understand why I was, you know, being sent to prison uh, for something that I didn't feel like I was, I was guilty of, um, it, it really showed me that God has a way of, of teaching us, you know, certain things and, and showing us certain things. And I'll tell you what, if, if I hadn't been separated from my boys for that, that amount of time, you wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have known, mm -mm. you know, and it would have got worse. Absolutely. You know, and, um, it, it, it uh, the scripture that comes out to me right now is that, um, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. Yes. And, and because of that, we all have to repent. Mm. And and so repenting, I've been learning through our pa to um, Pastor Charles Bennett and um, Bishop Michael Brown. I've been learning that repent is not um, just turning around, mm. but repent is transforming, and renewing that mind. Yes. Because yes. you know what? When Jesus came on the scene, they had to all those disciples and everybody had to change mm. the way they thought and the way they did things. Mm. And that if they didn't, they wouldn't be able to understand the things of Christ. Right. You know, and it's so it's just like with us. We can know all the word we want. We can go and speak and do all the things that the word world think a believer or a leader is supposed to do but the heart god knows the heart he says he looks at the heart Amen. and not the outward part Amen. but if we don't have that mind renewed to god this is about you this is telling your your testimony mm -hmm. and um ours is just letting the people see and know that oh if he did it for you he can do it for me yes Yes, because God is not a respecter of persons. Oh, yeah. You know, he is, he is not partial in any way, shape, or form. And, and you know, you look at the Apostle Paul, he says, you know, like, I'm the worst of the worst. And, and just being someone who used to persecute Christians and, and have them murdered. Yeah. And then um, not only that, but he was extremely full of pride. <laughs> Very you know? much so, yeah. And God had a way of knocking him off his high horse and, and he had an encounter with Jesus or, or you know the Holy Spirit that that really brought about that transformation and 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 look at his ministry. And look at and and you know what he was um Philippians there's four chapters you need to go to that if you need mm -hmm. some encouragement and stirring up. I would read those four chapters mm -hmm. over and because the things I did before I came to the Lord it's like I don't even want to talk on some of them but it's like I thought okay now if Saul to Paul could be the number one disciple apostle that is being spoken of. Yes. Um, and that um, his disciples didn't even trust him when God said he is one. Mm. He's a chosen one. Yes. They didn't because of all the things he did. They couldn't right. believe. But he was the chosen. <laughs> right. Right. And look, he also, while he was in prison, he wrote all of the majority of the New Testament. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You know? And so something happened to you. What happened to you? Well, um, God knocked me off my high horse, you know? Um, and, and I was, as I was sharing with you earlier, you know, just having served in the ministry, um, you know, we can get so complacent in our walk with God and, and we can lose focus. And I, and I think for me, you know, being on the pulp, on, on that platform and behind the pulpit, preaching God's word, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say that I ever took preaching the word of God lightly. Mm -hmm. um, but because of, of the, the attention that I, that I received, you know, people would come up to me and talk about how anointed I was and how good of a preacher I was while I let those compliments get to my head and, and I got, became puffed up with pride. Yes. And, and, you know, I, I, at that point it was about me, you know? And so these last seven months have really taught me, that it's, it's not about me. Even even my situation that I was going through, it was, it was so much bigger than myself, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I think just going back to uh, what I want to share with you is that um, God has a way of teaching us things. It, it might not come in the, in the way that we want or the package that we want. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is painful, um, but God is good and God is gracious. And the Bible says that, that God disciplines those he loves, you know? And, and when we're not really right with God when we're not aligned with his word, you know, it can be so easy for us to think that it's punishment, that God is just trying to torture us because we're not following his will. Right. But that's just not how God works. You know, he doesn't operate that way. 
And so for anyone that's struggling, you know, with, with those feelings of guilt and, and conviction, or, you know, maybe you were hurt and you're carrying a lot of bitterness. That's another thing that God taught me outside of idolizing my boys was that I was walking with bitterness and, and resentment. I hadn't actually forgiven um, a lot of the people that had, that had brought that pain into my life, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's so easy to, to say, oh, I forgive you, but to actually forgive someone from the heart, you know, you'll know because, you know, when you start praying for this person, you know, that, that God would, would change them and, and help them because you, I guess in the early stages of my prayers is that, well, God, I want you to change this person, change their heart. Right. It's everybody else. Because of their behavior. Exactly. But when you start praying because you really care about their salvation, yes, that's when there's a shift, you know, and, mm. and, you know, we, we are called to walk in love. And, and I think one of the stories in the Bible that I love so much is the story of, of Jonah, because, you know, this is a man who, who God called, right? And Jonah was a rebellious person. Yes. He was rebellious. And, and I really think, you know, because when God came to him and said, I want you to go to Nineveh, I didn't really understand the, you know, the, the, what, the, what the scripture was saying until you realize, you know, Jonah and and he didn't want to go to Nineveh because Nineveh was his enemies. Yes, you know. But how dare it be to us that we would eliminate anyone from Ooh. hearing the good news of Jesus Christ? You yes. know. And so when you pray for your enemies, you know the Bible says that God will bring peace or make peace with your enemies. And so I think that's another thing that God taught me was was really just about walking in love and genuine forgiveness. You know. And and I I wrote two books while I was in prison uh, that I kind of want to share about. You know. And, the first one is called Shame into Glory. Shame into Glory. Because I'll tell you what, um, when we deal with the, 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 the adversity and the struggles that, that life brings us, the Bible never said that if we were to follow Jesus, that life would be easy, yes. that it would be a cakewalk. You're right, Alika. In fact, it, 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 it warns us. You know, it tells us the complete opposite that we will well, be he, persecuted. Well, he warned Paul. Amen. He warned Paul that, you know, all that that he did, okay, this isn't going to be an easy road because of all that persecution and that. And you're going to go through a lot of Amen. it. Amen. Amen. You know, and I just, I, I think that we can get so wrapped up in, in our past and, and just the struggles that we we forget that, that God has a purpose, you know, and we talked about that, Jeremiah 29, 11, for, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Yes. Not, not, not he's, he's just not telling you casually. It says declare, you know, that, you know, I have plans to prosper you and, and not to harm you, plans to bring you a hope and a future. And so I, I want people to understand that things might not look good and gravy right now, but when you continue to press into God, when you continue to seek God genuinely, you know, he will bring you into your purpose. He will deliver you out of the darkness. And, and, and I think that's what we look at is um, our shame. It's so easy to focus on our shame. And, and just to share with you real quick, you know, like when I first, uh, so I got, I got convicted in March of this year. Okay. And then a month later in April, I got sentenced to three years in prison, which was a shock, you know, because even my own attorney was telling me, well, your charges are nonviolent. So, um, you know, you'll just get probation. I had no idea I was going to be committed to serve three years and be ripped away from my boys, yes. you know, and, and that was one of my greatest fears is because, um, I guess I didn't trust God enough that, that he loved my boys more than I do. Right. You know? Right. Yes, and, sir. And so, um, I had to turn myself in to the County jail because I was out on bail. Um, and so when I got sentenced to prison, the judge allowed me two weeks to get my affairs in order. And, and so when I turned myself into the county jail um, here in Otero County, um, I was greeted by the nurse as, hi, pastor. Yeah. You know, I mean, Alamogordo is yeah. a small community. He, and, everybody knows you. And everybody yes. knows people. And so she recognized me from the church. And so she was doing my medical intake. And, and I told her, I was, you know, she kept saying, Pastor Alika, Pastor Alika. I was, you, know, you don't have to call me a pastor anymore. I'm, I'm not a pastor anymore. And she said, oh, oh okay. And so as the, the corrections officer was escorting me back to my unit, he was, he was there in the vicinity. So he overheard my conversation and he also recognized who I was. And he's just like, look, I don't know why you're here and I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever you're thinking, whatever you're believing, you need to get your head out of your butt because whether you like it or not, 
you're still you're a still pastor. pastor. You, you, and, yes. and that's why, you know, he was he was telling me is that the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Yeah. And as I walked <laughs> into my unit, Jesus, Jesus, as I walked into my unit, he's like, hey, do yourself a favor. Philippians 1, 6, go look it up. <laughs> and he slammed the door behind me. And and so I, I didn't readily have that 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 verse memorized in my in my head. So I went back and I, I went to my Bible and I read that verse. And mm -hmm. exactly. You know, I am confident of this very thing. Confident. Yeah, but is. look. Confident of in him, him and him. not in exactly. you. Mm. That he who created a good work in me will bring it to the completion until the day of Jesus Christ. And and so I knew at that oh, moment, Jesus. I knew in that moment that even though I didn't understand my circumstance, yes, even though I didn't understand okay. why I was in jail or why I was going to prison, I knew that God had me on a mission. You know, and so I started a Bible study. Um, and, and I'll, my, there was about 16 guys in my unit. That's, that's as, as many people as I can hold in the pod. And yeah. so eight guys were in this Bible study. That's 50% of the guys yeah. in the pod. Yes. And, and I, you know, like, I just, I don't want this to be about me, but because of, of what God had me doing in there, I kind of just garnered this nickname as the Godfather or the pod father, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I had the opportunity to, to disciple two guys in there that, you know, that got out and. You know, I'm excited to reconnect with them. I just got out of prison on Monday, and so it's it's you know I'm still trying to get reacclimated with with the 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 lifestyle of being out. The, the transition. The transition, yes. But. See, and and this is another thing. This is this is what I love about the Lord because now, as you're witnessing, it's not book knowledge. It's not it's not what you heard somebody. You're able to now allow that word to flow through you and come out in real truth. Mm. And not and not try to make it be what you think they need Amen. and to do what you did, how you made it through, endured it is going to be helpful to those who out there that are trying, you know, because now you're out. There's still challenges before you. Absolutely. But God has has it worked out. Absolutely. If we trust him. Amen. Amen. You know, and I can I just that's why I stand on Romans 828, you know, because yeah. God works all things together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And, you know, and so when I started doing that Bible study, um, you know, like God just began showing me and teaching me so many things that, you know, like it wasn't about me, it, you know, it wasn't about um, what I was going through and, and how I was affected or how my boys were affected. Because I think one of the important things that I want you to take away from this is that when we're going through struggles in our lives, you know, it, 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 can, it can be easy to blame God. But again, you know, I, I had to, I had to, um, readjust my my perspective and the way that I thought, and I just had to ask God, well, what are you trying to teach me? You know, and so, well, those those things you were walking in led you into all the areas where you went. So, see, that's why we can't blame God because each of our decisions, each of each of the choices that we're making. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it's going to open a door for another door to be open. So bitterness, unforgiveness, all that, it, it keeps opening other doors. And before you know it, you look up and like you say, you were a pastor. It's like, how did I get here? Mm. You know, how did I get here? Well, you got here because of all the things that you chose back there brought you up here. And now your mind is renewed, transformed. You, you, you're, you're looking at life differently. Yes. Yes. You know, and, and I, and I, and I think I can say this because a lot of people can probably relate. You know, it's not easy to pick up the Bible and read it every single day. You know, it, it takes discipline. And, and I, you know, in all the years of ministry that I've um, been serving and, you know, just going to different outreaches and, and conferences and just ministering to other people, I, I had never felt as close to God um, in mm -hmm. those, in those 12 years of ministry than I have in these last seven months, you mm -hmm. know, and, so I, I get to, to RDC and I was going through the classification process. Um, I was there for about another five weeks and I started another Bible study there. Um, you know, and so I knew that I, I had to continue what God had called me to do. You to do. And, you know, I wasn't sure where I was going to end up as far as what prison I was going to go to. I was praying that God would send me to Las Cruces because it's so close to home, you know, and I'd be able to visit my boys. Um, but Needless to say, I prayed that God would send me wherever he wanted me to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up in Santa Fe, which is the furthest prison away from home. <laughs> and I was just like, what in the world is going on? Um, but as soon as I got there, I was greeted by the chaplain. And, you know, he offered me a job in the 
uh, the chapel right away because it's a work camp. So everybody has to have a job there. Um, and by the grace of God, I was, the chapel. I was in the chapel. I was, I was, you know, just, um, leaving the chapel services every weekend. And, you know, that first month that we were there, 12 guys got, got baptized. Hallelujah. God was just kind of showing me, okay, you know, this is, I have you where I exactly where I want you, mm -hmm. you know, and and so that's when really that's when God put that on my heart to to write that book, Shame and the Glory, because, you know, again, we can still we can still focus on the things of the past, and and those things begin to, can begin to manifest, you know, in our lives, and we can just walk in mm -hmm. in guilt and shame, and in fact, one of the scriptures that I was reading when I was in in uh, in prison was Psalm four two. It says, how long will you people turn my glory into shame? Mm. How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Mm. You know, and for me, money has always been my weakness, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the, it's not a sin to be wealthy or to have money, yeah. but the Bible says that for the love of money is, is the root of all kinds of evil. And that's, that was my downfall is, is that right. I loved money, you know, and I, it got to this point in my life where I felt inadequate if i didn't have money right i didn't feel like i was important enough or you know that people or would like me do the things for the kingdom of god for your boys for yeah. you know we we put all kinds of excuses as why we need to do this because this is why we need to glorify god but we're not we're just twisting exactly exactly you know and, and the and the more and more we allow that to happen the more and more we allow this sin to take root in our lives and that's that's exactly what that passage is talking about is how long are you going to turn you know my glory into mm -hmm. shame you know my praise into shame because god is so good you know and he's blessed us abundantly and and we take those blessings and and we just use it for our own benefit mm -hmm. you know we don't we don't give praise where praise is due we don't give honor where honor is due and and it can lead us down a very destructive path in our lives so our time is about winding up what was the second book so the okay. second book that, that I wrote is called Love Changes Everything, you know, and that's, and that's so true because it's so easy to, to say negative things about people. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to speak truth in love. And, you know, the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that God loved us so much. He, he loved us that he demonstrated his love in this, that while we were still sinners, mm -hmm. God died for our, Jesus died for our sins. And so love does change everything. If we can really tap into God's love, then, then we can walk in love. We can, you know, just the, the things that of God become so much more clear to us. And, and it makes more sense that we're not bitter. Yeah. We're better. We're, yes. So, so I want to ask you one more question to wrap us up here is, um, you know, people, and I know people that might be watching and all that. And they're saying, well, I'm not a bad person. I, I, okay. I don't really go to church or read my bible a lot or whatever but i'm I'm living a good life and i'm just working all that and why do they need jesus why do they need this relationship because it's not a religion but a, a relationship is what we're needing what can you say to people that are watching absolutely you know because i mean we need jesus because he is our everything you know like the bible says that with man nothing is possible but with God, all, all things, things are, are possible. possible. And when you're facing, you know, things in your life that that seem impossible, I mean, God takes the impossible and makes it possible just because of who He is. You know, we have to understand that God is gracious in His love. He doesn't, He He didn't, you know, He doesn't have um, plans to keep us small and contained. He wants to prosper us. He wants to He wants to bless us. And 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 you know, the Bible says that we have not because we ask not. We ask not. You know, and and if we ask in His name, then then we you know we have a god who loves us and and who will give us exactly what we need at the, at the at the right time so i want i want to um share with you just a few things that i want you to be praying for um it uh, I, right here it says um lord please pray to heal our land and so you can go and read second chronicles 7 14 and so when we pray and ask and when we turn from our sins turn away and get your mind renewed on his word you know, our reputation dies when we ask Jesus to come into our heart. Amen. And so we take on the rep reputation of Christ. And so then the things that we start doing and living and speaking, we want it to reflect on the Lord. And then the other thing is, Lord, protect those working on the front line, serving the sick, hungry, and the homelessness. So even with 
COVID trying to rise its head again, which is another type of flu and all of that. Um, some people have died, other, other sicknesses as that flu virus has come into them causes other symptoms in their body and they have to, we want to, we want to agree that anyone that is working in nursing homes, um, hospitals and places that they're covered and, you know, we're covered by the blood of God. uh, The son, Jesus died for you and me, Isaiah 53, go read that. Isaiah 53 tells you about fasting and praying. No, Isaiah 58 is about fasting and praying. Isaiah 53 is going to tell you about the healing that you have because of what Christ did. The other thing I want to remind you is, um, Lord, how can I bless my church? Not only financially, but servitude even. Don't just be going to church and sitting on the bleachers when you need to go and and do something. You see something, you know, it's sort of like, um, I came outside of our church and there was a piece of paper on the st- on the step. Okay, it don't matter what title you have. Go pick up that piece of paper and throw it in the trash so that the area can still look beautiful and glorify our Lord. And so I want to, um, oh, and what you said about what we do for others, Alika. Lord, please use me to bless others mm-hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. So this is being aired doing right after Christmas and coming before New Year's Eve. And so what did you do different? What have you done different? Um, Let God use you and do it from the heart. God loves cheerful givers. God loves people that are wanting to do it. Amen. Amen. So if you want to, we're going to let you end us in prayer. I am so blessed. I'm blessed not because of your titles, not because of anything that's going on in your life. I'm I'm blessed because I've just watched you over these years. And Mm -hmm. the one thing I love is that you never give up. I don't care what's going on. Mm -hmm. You bounce back up. But this time your bounce that you've gotten up is it's truly real in the Lord that he be known through you, Mm -hmm. that he be known through you. And there's no ashamement because God said he would not bring condemnation on us. The Holy Spirit comes to convict, not to condemn. Amen. And who does he come for? He comes for those that are lost and sick. Amen. He comes. And, and if any of us think that we don't need him, you are really off track because we won't be perfect until Christ takes us home. Amen. So we got to be this bride that's getting ready and prepared. Right, Alika? Amen. Amen. And so... I don't know what God wants you to end with, but look in there, hallelujah, and then pray us out. All right. Well, you know, this, I want to share one last thing, you know, just kind of talking about what you were, you were saying, you know, I never give up, you know, and trust me, I wanted to. There's been so many times where I wanted to give up, and I kind of shared that with you, and I tried to run from the church. I tried to run from God, but I think the one thing that we need to figure out is that as Christians, as followers of Christ, we are never down. You know, yes. we are either up or up. we're getting back up. And so, you know, I just want to encourage you, don't, don't ever give up. You know, just understand that God, God is gracious. God has a plan for you and, mm-hmm. and he is, he is faithful to deliver you from whatever you're going through and whatever you're struggling with. So, hallelujah, amen. Father God, we just thank you so much, first and foremost, for who you are, for all that you are. God, I thank you for my sister Latanya and her ministry. I just pray, God, that you would continue, Lord, to, to give her the vision and, and the strength and thank the courage you, that she needs you, Lord. to go out and share your word, to, to share the gospel with this, this lost and dying world, God. And I just thank you so much for the viewers. God, I pray that thank you would you. meet them right where they're at, whatever they're struggling with, whatever they're going through through whatever adversity they're facing. God, I may, I, may they know who you are. You're a sovereign God. You, you, you are in control. You work all things together for good to those that love you and are called according to your purpose in God. Your word, you, your word promises us that we have a plan. We have, we have a, 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 you have a purpose for our lives. And, and because of that, God, we, we cling to your, per, your promises and, and we say yes to you today. Yes. Lord Jesus, we say yes to your will. It's, it's not about me. It's, it's not about what I Hallelujah. want for myself or for my flesh, but it's all about you, God. So we give you all the thanks, all the praise, all the glory. And so, again, we just we love you. We praise you. And and God, we just want to live our lives for you. So give us the courage. Give us the discipline to, to walk in love, Thank to, you, to speak truth in love, and to, to be a light in this dark and dying world. We love you. We praise you in Jesus name. Jesus name. Amen. And remember that you are blessed. Amen. And we want you to go into the year 2024 knowing 
and re encouraging you to stay in the race. race.